Google released Jules, an AI coding agent. Is this Google's response to OpenAI's recently launched Codex? Absolutely. Both tools do nearly the same thing, but there are critical differences that will impact which one you should actually use, especially how Jules handles feedback during tasks and internet access in its environment. The AI coding agent war has officially begun between these tech giants. Today, I'm breaking down exactly what Jules can do, how it works behind the scenes, and the key similarities and differences compared to Codex that every developer needs to understand. Let's dig in. Jules is an AI coding agent designed to handle development tasks asynchronously in the cloud. While it does that, Jules shows its work as it makes progress, so you never have to guess what code it's writing or what it's thinking. At its core, Jules is a specialized application of Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro model, fine-tuned for software engineering tasks and equipped to clone your GitHub repository, set up a fresh development environment, install dependencies, make code changes based on your prompts, run tests to verify its work, open pull requests with detailed explanations. All of this happens in a secure cloud-based virtual machine that you never need to configure manually. Currently in beta, Jules is free during this initial period while Google gathers feedback from developers. What about you? Did you get access to Jules? Let me know in the comments. We'll discuss in detail about its architecture and how it works under the hood shortly. But before that, let's take a look at what you can actually do with this new tech. First, it excels at bug fixing. If you have tests that are failing, Jules can analyze the issue, fix the code, and verify the solution all within its environment. Second, Jules handles version bumps and dependency upgrades, which is one of those tedious but necessary tasks we all face. For example, you could ask Jules to upgrade Node.js to latest version and migrate your project structure. Third, Jules can perform scoped code transformations, like converting a code base to use TypeScript, updating to new API patterns, or refactoring code to follow best practices. Fourth, it can migrate code across languages or frameworks. This is particularly valuable when you need to port functionality from one technology to another. Fifth, it can ship isolated scoped features, adding new functionality within specific boundaries that you define. And finally, it handles all the PR creation, showing you a diff of changes, and even generates audio summaries called codecasts to explain what it did. From a technical standpoint, Jules has a fascinating architecture at the foundation is Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro model, which powers Jules's code understanding, generation, and reasoning capabilities. On top of that sits the virtual machine instance layer, where your code actually gets executed. Each task runs in its own fresh VM instance with a code generation engine, testing and verification tools, version control integration. The orchestration layer manages the task queue VM pool, and GitHub API interactions. And finally, the user interface layer provides the activity feed, code diff viewer, and task planning interface. When you submit a task, it flows through this stack. Your prompt enters the system. Jules clones your repo and analyzes it. A plan is generated and presented for your approval. The VM executes the plan running actual code, Results are verified through tests. Changes are prepared for GitHub integration. This architecture allows Jules to handle multiple concurrent tasks while maintaining isolation between them. We'll come to how you can set it up and start running tasks in a while. But let's first address the elephant in the room, how Jules compares to OpenAI's Codex, their similarities and differences. Now that we know Jules shares a similar vision with OpenAI's recently launched Codex, let's look at the core similarities. Both Jules and Codex work asynchronously, allowing you to focus on other tasks, operate in isolated cloud environments, clone your GitHub repositories, 
Generate plans before making changes. Handle similar task types, bug fixes, refactoring, migrations, create pull requests with verified changes. Show their work through activity feeds and diffs, allow you to review and approve changes before they're committed. The emergence of these tools from both Google and OpenAI signals a clear direction for AI in software development, moving beyond simple code completion to handling entire development tasks independently. Despite these similarities, there are some notable differences between Joules and Codex. First, the underlying technology. Joules runs on Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro model, while Codex uses OpenAI's specialized Codex 1 model based on O3. Second, environment access. Joules provides internet access in its VM, allowing it to install packages from external repositories. In contrast, Codex operates in an air-gapped environment with no access to the broader internet. Third, interaction models differ. Joules appears to allow more feedback during task execution, while Codex has acknowledged limitations in providing mid-task guidance. Fourth, they have different unique features. Joules offers codecasts, while Codex emphasizes self-reflection capabilities where it explains its problem-solving approach. Fifth, documentation approaches vary. Joules relies on setup scripts for environment configuration, while Codex uses an agent's file along with setup scripts to understand project standards and commands. Let's walk through how to set up and use Joules. The steps are pretty similar to Codex. However, Google does mention writing specific prompts to get the most out of Joules, which I'll share in a minute. First, you can access Joules via your Google account. Next, you'll connect your GitHub account and select which repositories you want Joules to access, either all repos or just specific ones. For each repository, you'll create an environment setup script that tells Joules how to install dependencies and prepare the environment. For example, for a Node.js project, you might simply write npm install npm test. You can test your setup script directly in the Joules interface to catch any issues early. As for the prompts, Google says that specificity is key. For example, add a loading spinner while fetch user profile runs. Fix the 500 error when submitting the feedback form. Document the use cache hook with JS doc case. Avoid vague prompts like fix everything, optimize code, make this better. Once you submit a task, Joules will generate a plan for you to review and approve before any code is written. I'll do a follow-up video with a hands-on walkthrough in a future video, but this gives you the general setup process. So subscribe if you haven't. While Joules does bring some additional value to the table, it has some limitations that you need to be aware of. Currently, each user is limited to three concurrent tasks, five total tasks per day, five code casts per day. These limits may be increased upon request, particularly for developers who are actively using Joules in their workflow. Joules can fail due to incomplete environment setup scripts, vague or overly broad prompts, repos with unusual build systems, long running processes in setup scripts. It's worth noting that Joules is currently free during the beta period but Google has indicated they expect to introduce pricing in the future. From a security perspective, you should approach Joules as you would any shared compute environment, avoiding secrets or credentials in your repository code. So where does Joules really shine in real-world development? First, it's excellent for routine maintenance tasks like dependency updates, which often take significant time but don't require deep creative thinking. Second, it can handle bug fixes, especially when you have reliable tests that can verify the solution. Third, it's valuable for migrations and refactoring. For example, if you need to update a code base to use a new API or convert from JavaScript to TypeScript, Joules can handle much of the heavy lifting. Fourth, Joules can add documentation or tests to existing code, improving maintainability without requiring your full attention. For teams, Joules offers interesting collaboration possibilities. 
Multiple team members can assign tasks, review work, and merge changes, all while focusing on more complex or creative aspects of development. The emergence of tools like Joules and Codex signals a significant shift in how we approach software development. Rather than just suggesting code snippets as you type, these tools can handle entire tasks independently, shifting the developer's role more toward oversight and high-level direction. The key benefits include time savings on routine tasks, ability to focus on higher-level work while AI handles implementation, verified, tested code changes, transparent processes with full visibility. As Jules moves beyond beta, we can expect to see expanded language support, more sophisticated reasoning about complex code bases, and possibly integration with other Google Cloud services. That's it for today's overview of Google Jules. I make videos on the latest AI tools, how they work under the hood, and practical ways to use them, whether you're a developer, business professional, or just AI curious. If you want to level up your AI skills faster, Join my Patreon for exclusive resources, including my private prompt engineering handbook, early access to tutorials, and behind-the-scenes breakdowns of AI systems that I can't share on YouTube. If you found this valuable, smash that like button and subscribe to stay updated on the AI revolution happening across all industries. Drop a comment with your thoughts on Jules vs. Codex or what aspects you'd like me to cover in my hands-on comparison in the follow-up video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.